sometimes as African-American women, we're a bit more dramatic in that you go to the doctor and you complain and you complain and you complain and you're not taken serious because you cried wolf the entire pregnancy. What's up, world? It's your girl, Receipts with Real. Welcome back to my channel. Now, this particular topic is something that I'm very passionate about. And I haven't posted on YouTube in quite some time because the algorithm was whooping my... <laughs> and I wasn't getting any views. But I've been sitting here pouting and trying to figure out, okay, what is the topic that's going to break me out of my shell and just make me go ahead and start posting again. And this is it. This is it, y'all, because this is something that's very near, dear, and personal to me. So I'm going to let y'all hear the rest of these clips. And then when we come back, y'all are going to hear my commentary. Yeah, we got to get into some things. It ain't me, boo. I don't know what you talking about, but go ahead. I didn't say you. I just said as, as African-American women, we want to also make sure you're being serious with your doctor and not playing the game so I can take you off work. Because then we see you 25 times in the pregnancy. It's hard to believe that there's a true problem when there's a true problem. Wealthiest countries in the world, the United States of America, we have the highest rates of maternal mortality that, that black women in, in our country at, in this era Mm -hmm. are three times more likely to die in connection with childbirth. I think it's um, inexcusable. It, it certainly shouldn't be that way. And what I really want us to do is just make sure we are talking about it. We have been fighting for states to expand Medicaid coverage. We need all the states to sign on. And we need to let moms know that they're actually entitled to Medicaid coverage for up to 12 months of postpartum care. And that's one of the things that we need to get the word out. We also set up a hotline for mothers to have support in terms of emotional and mental health. So I'll give you that number and let's make sure we get that out also. It's 1-833-TLC-MAMA. And, right, and I'm gonna be posting. And Buffy, you can relate, you're in for For real? You just told all these people that she in front of Did they just have a conversation and, and Jackie, she gave you the okay to tell the whole damn room? Y'all bravo, because that's who set this shit up with Kamala. Y'all should have let Simone do that interview. Y'all should have let Simone do that. Y'all should have let, I know y'all trying to save her career because I showed everybody who the hell she really is. Talking about, about uh, black mortality rates for pregnant women. She don't see them damn people. I bet she ain't tell Candy and the rest of them people, you don't need to be called off work during their pregnancy if they came in there with some damn problems. But the ones who ain't got a coin to pay you in cash, they need to prove without a shadow of a doubt that they're in fact in pain. And you are a black doctor saying this. Why I got so much smoke? My aunt Dee Dee um, died in childbirth. Her daughter survived. I'm so thankful her dad is going to let her spend Christmas at my house, at our house this year. Now, these clips are going around on social media. So let's start off by reading the comments. It says here, as her former nurse who works side by side to her and former patient, everything y'all finally seen about your favorite doctor is who she really is. She does accept Medicaid and she sees patients from all walks of life in her practice, but... She is a person who throws rocks and hides her hands. The moment I got pregnant with my now two-year-old in a high-risk pregnancy, she made my life hell. She does not care about pregnancy, nor does she care about the black women she claims to advocate for. No one is off limits, not even her celeb friends, patients. She's a nasty person who is jaded about not being able to have children herself. Before I get into my commentary, I just want to say, hey, y'all, I've missed y'all so much. Now, in case you haven't been seeing me or you've been wondering why you haven't been seeing me, it's because I've been other places um, while I try to figure out what's going on over here with my account. Now, if you're a YouTuber or you know anything about it, you have to go through um, identity verification and you got to go through all these steps in order to be monetized. And... um. 
I was sending in my driver's license and sending in my tax return forms and they was getting rejected. So that's still going on. And while I try to figure out this mess and try to sort it out, you know, I've been on other platforms. So y'all make sure y'all follow me everywhere on all social media platforms at Receipts With Real. Now, let's get into this current topic. Dr. Jackie said some very problematic things that hit close to home. And I can personally re so relate Dr. to this topic. So this was the thing that really I was like, okay, I got to speak on this. This is something that I've been wanting to speak on. And now that it's being brought to the forefront, let's get into it. This is very personal. I'm sharing my personal business with y'all. <laughs> but um, I have two children. But although I only have two children, I was pregnant four times. I was pregnant four times. Oh, man. <sighs> okay, I don't want to get emotional while talking about this. So I'm, I'm going to try my best to um, keep, it for, keep it professional, y'all. But <sighs> this is a really hard topic. Man, I didn't think it was going to be this hard to talk about. Okay, so... The first time I ever got pregnant, I was like 21 years old and I chose not to um, go through with the pregnancy. And the reason why is because I had one of the most severe forms of morning sickness you could ever imagine. I don't think that many of y'all have ever seen somebody who was as, as sick as I was. And just imagine being 21 years old, you're in this new relationship um, with this guy, and he's not really acting right, not really supportive at all. Um, parents aren't really supportive. Well, only one of my parents knew, but um, still, um, one of my parents said some some pretty ill things to me during this time. And so I'm dealing with the lack of support from the people who should be supporting me. And then I'm also dealing with, I go to the doctor and I'm telling the doctor that I'm not feeling well. Um, I really do need you to write me a note because I can barely get out of bed every day. I barely made it to this doctor's appointment. <laughs> I had to catch a ride to the doctor's appointment because I didn't even feel good enough to drive. And the doctor is just looking at me crazy like, you're fine. It's just morning sickness. And I'm like, no, I've seen morning sickness before. This is something else. Every single time I stand up, I'm vomiting and I can't stand for more than five minutes or I feel weak and dizzy like I'm about to pass out, like I'm about to faint. And the only way that I can describe it to y'all was imagine having a hangover. Just imagine having a hangover that never went away. That's really the only way I can describe it. Imagine your worst hangover that you've ever had in your life and then you don't get no relief from it. You feel like that 24 hours a day. I didn't know what was going on with my body. I was behind on my rent, starting to get behind on my bills. Didn't have no support from nobody. So I made the decision to terminate. And when I tell y'all, that decision ate me up so bad, it ate me up real bad. And I didn't really get over it until I decided to have another child two years later. So fast forward to 2013 and um, the first time was 2011. Fast forward to 2013, I'm pregnant with my um, my firstborn, but this is my second pregnancy. Now I'm starting to notice a pattern because with both pregnancies, I immediately knew I was pregnant. I knew immediately after conception because of the way that my body reacted. I started being real sick. So I'm like, okay, this is the second time this happened. I'm not terminating again. So we just going to have to deal with it. We about to thug it out. I thought that eventually, you know, after talking to doctors, doctors, again, were not helpful with this pregnancy. The only thing the doctors were saying was, um, you know, 
it's normal, you're fine, we've done all of your, you know how when they check you in and they check your blood pressure and all of that, we've checked your vitals, you're fine, you're fine. So all they would do is check my vitals and then they would check, every time I would go to the doctor, they would, you know, um, check for a heartbeat and then they say you're fine and they would send me on my way. Now it's gotten to the point where I can't work. So now I've applied for public assistance. Public assistance wants you to go into these classes every day to go find work. And I'm like, y'all, I literally cannot barely even get out of bed. And the doctor, once again, still wouldn't approve time off. That's why it's very problematic, the statements that Dr. Jackie was making, because even if a woman is asking for time off during work, give it to her. You don't know what's going on with her body. You don't know how she's feeling. How can you say that somebody is crying wolf when they're telling you that they're sick while they're pregnant? So my doctors were very much giving Dr. Jackie energy. Now, one of the mistakes that I made was going to a residency clinic. I didn't know any better. This is just what the hospital recommended. I went to the hospital across the street, um, to confirm my pregnancy, and then they referred me to the residency clinic across the street. So pretty much every time I went to the doctor, I either had a new doctor or it was somebody else new in the room that they were training. And I didn't really know how to get around this. I just, y'all, yeah. it sounds so crazy right now as I'm saying it, but you cannot think straight when you have a hangover. You can't. And, and that's how I felt. I felt like I had a hangover 24 hours of the day. So nothing in my brain was even functioning correctly. I was just happy to be able to put my pants on and shower and brush my teeth every day. So none of the decisions that I made during my pregnancy were good because I was not in my right mind. Um, and then I continued on like this for the whole nine months. So Y'all think you have it bad when you have a hangover for one day. Imagine having that hangover feeling for nine months. The entire time, it never stopped. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. Could barely sleep. So I went into the pregnancy as a pretty, you know, pretty hefty girl. And after I had my daughter, I was skinny. The skinniest I had ever been since high school. So I remember telling one of my friends, I'm like, man... I lost 30 pounds, you know, after I had my child. I'm like, man, I lost 30 pounds. And she was like, oh, girl. She was like, that's nothing. She was like, shoo. She was like, I'm down 35 pounds. And I'm like, no, I lost an additional 30 pounds from before I even got pregnant. I'm not talking about the, the, the baby weight because I never gained any baby weight. <laughs> Y'all. The smell, the mere smell of any type of food would make me pass out. So anyway, moving along, I had my first daughter. She was so freaking gorgeous, y'all, and still is gorgeous. One of the most beautiful babies. I promise you, I was just so in love. And, you know, all of that pain just went away. As soon as I had my baby, no more morning sickness. Everything just went away instantly. And I had an immediate snapback. Everybody was like, oh, my God, you look good, girl. You look good. You look good. And so I'm embracing it because I'm like, yep, mm -hmm, just had a baby. I'm looking good out here snatched. You know, there was really no recovery time for me because I had already been losing so much weight when I was pregnant. And I was already so sick when I was pregnant that after I had the baby, I felt so much better. Anyway, me and the baby daddy, about a year later, I end up getting pregnant again. Once again, I'm sick again. I had a miscarriage that time. And then a few months after that, I got pregnant again. So now I'm on my fourth pregnancy. And at this point, I'm on my fourth pregnancy, but I only have one child. And so at this point, I'm like, um, you know, obviously we're going to keep this child because, you know, I'm, I'm never going to uh, terminate. Um, I only terminated once and I said, I'm never going to do that again. We just going to have to figure it out. 
And so, you know, after I had my miscarriage, then I ended up getting pregnant with my um my now second child. I'm sorry, y'all. I hope I'm not being too confusing. But anyway, um, I was sick again, once again. And at this point, I had already made it up in my mind that I didn't even want to go to the doctor, y'all. I didn't because my father was a registered nurse. Rest in peace to my dad. My aunt is a doctor. So I just wanted them to take care of me. And they didn't even live in the same city as me. They they lived about two hours away. So whenever my dad would come visit, I would have him, you know, check on me and do all my vitals and stuff. But yeah, I was that traumatized from the previous doctors that I didn't want to go to the doctor just for them to look me in my face and tell me that nothing was wrong with me. Do you know how insulting that is? Going a whole nine months of a pregnancy and doctors looking at you telling you that there's nothing wrong with you, even though you can't even get out of the bed without vomiting. Every single time you stand up, it causes you to vomit to the point that my teeth are getting yellow. It's eating away at my enamel. Hair's falling out. I'm losing weight while pregnant. Oh, but there's nothing wrong. You're fine. You're overweight. So you can stand to lose some fat. Now, at this point, um, this is 2015, um, I ended up moving in with my mom so she could take care of me, and I only, st I think I only stayed at her house uh, for a few months um, until my apartment was ready, and even when my apartment was ready, I did not want to go home. I, I needed, what I really needed was a nurse. I needed an in-home nurse 24-7, and my mom, she is a medical assistant, and so at this point, she already knew what was up. She knew, okay, I'm going to have to take care of this girl because, yeah. And my mom and I, we, we've never had the best relationship. But um, obviously all of that was put to the side. And, you know, she was running my bath water. <sighs> I remember one time just sitting in the bathroom crying, crying because I stood up to try to go eat some yogurt and I had an accident out of nowhere and I had an accident and I was vomiting at the same time. <sighs> Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, I know this story sounds like all over the place as I'm trying to tell it because I'm getting flashbacks and I'm just thinking about like everything like, wow, like you really, you really went through hell trying to have two kids. <sighs> but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I, I got to wrap it up because I mean, I could break down the whole nine months, month by month. I would love to do that, but I don't want to bore y'all with the details. And I think that that might be something that's better suited for my vlog channel. So anyway, um, time to have the baby, right? And mind y'all, I told y'all, I chose not to get prenatal care just because of how horrible they treated me the last time. But it was time to have a baby. My friend pops up at my house. And my friend is like, this is my angel, y'all. She's literally my garden angel. We still friends to this day. And she was like, hey, I was just coming by just to check on you. And um, I'm like, girl, I think my water just broke. Now, how is it that she popped up at my house right after my water broke? That's crazy, right? Like, it was just, she was just my angel. So she takes me to the nearby hospital. She asks me what hospital um, I want to go to. And I just told her to take me to the closest one. Now, one thing that I will say is that the hospital that I had my child at the first time, um, it was a smooth process. They took care of me. I felt great when I had my first baby. But the second baby, I decided to go to a different hospital. And when I tell you that was the most racist experience of my life. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I go um, to be checked in. I let them know my water breaks. 
And then they put me in like um, the triage room or whatever. And then there's the, I, I thought it was the triage nurse, you know, the person or the person who comes to like check your vitals. I didn't think that this was going to be my labor and delivery nurse, y'all. I had just got to the emergency room and this, and this lady is checking my vitals, being very rude to me. And I just ignored it because I'm like, whatever. I'm like, I just need to hurry up and get to my labor and delivery room. And so um, she says, okay, come on. And I'm like, well, come on. She's like, yeah, we're going to go to your room, your labor and delivery room. I said, my labor and delivery room? Yeah, come on. I'll show you where it's at. It's, it's right around the corner. I said, can you give me a wheelchair? She's like, it's it's not that far. I'm like, my water broke. I'm having contractions. I shouldn't be walking. I don't feel comfortable walking. So she throws the biggest fit, has the biggest attitude. She does not want to get the wheelchair, but she finally goes to go get the wheelchair. She wheels me in the room and um, she was just very cold, you know, and I'm still waiting on my labor and delivery nurse. I still did not know she was my labor and delivery nurse. She never introduced herself as that. And next thing you know, the anesthesiologist is coming in and he never introduces himself. Y'all, he was rude too. And so, you know, at this point, my mom and my best friend, they show up to the hospital because my best friend had to drop me off, but they show back up to the hospital. Baby daddy in jail. Yeah, I know. I know. And that's a whole nother story. <sighs> My mom is like praying in the middle of while the anesthesiologist is doing my epidural because that man poked me over eight times and he was so rude to me, him and the nurse. He was like, you're not sitting correctly. You're not positioning yourself correctly. You're you're being difficult. And I'm like. I didn't say anything, y'all. I was completely silent because I was scared for my life. You know it was bad if my mom started praying. Because she knew that one wrong move and I could be paralyzed. So the nurse is like telling me, you've got to relax. And I'm I, I'm silent, y'all. I'm not saying anything because I'm scared for my life and I'm in pain. And so he finally gets the epidural correct after like eight times. And um, as soon as him and his girlfriend walk out the room, because I mean, that's what they was acting like. The nurse and the anesthesiologist was acting like a couple and they both was being so rude to me. And when they walked out of the room, my mom just immediately said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And I said, thank you, God. We all said, thank you, God. Um, and she was like, what is wrong with them? They being so rude. I'm like, mom, I don't know. The nurse been rude to me since I got here. And it was this white lady, blonde hair, blue eyes. And um, I think they were listening in on the... Uh, I think they can listen to you while you're in the room. Because me and my friend, like, we were just talking about how rude she was being, how racist she was being. And then the next thing you know, when she comes back in the room, she's a little bit nicer. Just a little bit. Right? But I could still feel all my contractions, y'all. That epidural, whatever he did, it didn't work. I could feel everything. And, you know, I complained and he's like, um, you just have to push the button, push the button. It'll give you more medicine. I'm like, sir, it's not working. He was like, well, it works for everyone. Um, you obviously have built up some sort of tolerance to, he didn't say drugs, but y'all, they was in there trying to treat me like a damn fiend. Ain't never touched drugs a day in my life. And these people, listen, <laughs> Oh my God, it's not funny, but this is one of the most traumatic experiences I've had ever experienced. Do you hear me? So I basically had my baby natural. 
I felt everything. And when I was pushing, it, it hurt so bad for me to push. And I just remember telling the nurse, like, I can't do this. It hurts so bad. And she's like, well, if you want to have the baby, you're going to have to push. Do you want to have this baby or not? She was just so freaking rude. And obviously she had told the whole entire staff. Well, she did. Not obviously. Factually, she told the whole entire staff that she suspected that I was on drugs. Yeah. Here, this is me, somebody who's afraid to touch marijuana. And this lady then told these people that she suspects I'm on drugs. Now, mind you, all they had to do was test my pee. Um, but immediately after my baby, they took um, my daughter um, in for testing. And they tested her poop for, for drugs. They didn't tell me this. But what happened was the next day I had a new nurse. And the new nurse told me all of this. The new nurse says, well, everything came back fine with your testing. And I'm like, what testing? Oh, we tested the baby, you know, nothing. She came back negative for any drugs. And I'm like, okay. She said, well, yeah, obviously you know that. She said, but the last nurse was suspicious. Yeah. That is the type of racism that black women have to face on a day-to-day -day basis, unprovoked. Not only that, they sent social workers to my room. And before the social worker, it was a black woman, I'll never forget, before the social worker could even step foot halfway in my room, I told her to leave. She said, I, I just want to talk. I said, I don't want to talk to you about nothing. Leave my room. Because if y'all think about it, who wants to sit up there and look in a social worker's face after you just had a baby? And I told her to leave my room and she left. Now, that was the short version. Okay, I didn't have time to say everything that happened. It was so many microaggressions and so many racist things that happened to me during that stay. It wasn't until I got a new nurse that she was nice and she told me everything, you know, that the previous nurse was saying about me or she didn't, obviously she couldn't say everything, but she was dropping hints. And still to this day, I still have PTSD about that to this day. That was one of the most worst experiences of my life. And, you know, I just thank God that I'm still here. My baby is healthy and I just feel for any black woman in America who has to deal with racism during childbirth. That should be one of the most beautiful, precious times. And it happened to be one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. So Dr. Jackie, you are scum. And the fact that you felt the need to go on a public pla platform as big as yourself and say something like that I have no words for you. Um, everyone else, comment down below. Let me know what y'all think about this entire segment. <sighs> I promise the next segment will be better. This one, I was just barely trying to get through my emotions. But um, y'all stay tuned and let me know if y'all with me. Let me know if y'all here. Let me know if y'all can see my videos. And I will catch y'all next time.